Okay, so here we have a U2000 and we're going to do the light bulb test to test our power supply. So again, let's say you have a U2000 that is not working. You plug it in, turn it on, it does nothing, totally dead. Assuming Q703 is good and your voltage regulator is good and you've gone through and tested everything you can possibly test. Switch mode power supply and you're at your wit's end. You don't know if it's a power supply problem or something else in the horizontal circuit. This test will tell you definitively whether you have a faulty power supply section or a good power supply section. And it's it's different from the 7400 and 7500. Those are the same. Each one of those are the same when it comes to this process, so I just covered it on the 7500. But the U2000 and the U5000 are actually different slightly, so we're going to do those separately. So on the U2000, there is a jumper between R732 and R100. R100 is your B plus resistor. That is this guy right here, covered in this hot glue. I did not do this hot glue mess. Somebody else did this before I got it, and I didn't want to go through and try and peel it all off, so I just left it. But R100 is this B plus resistor here. This here is um, R732, and you'll see that there's a little jumper across here. This is the jumper from the power supply side that feeds all your B plus over to the rest of your circuit. So with this removed, your, your flyback shouldn't power up, nothing should power up. So you're going to want to take this out of the circuit. It's one trace across here that feeds both sides. It's this trace right here. So right there you want to remove that jumper from the circuit and hook up your lead straight to it, just like that. It's that simple. So we'll zoom back out here again and let's get this stuff back on the bench. Okay, so again, you can power this up without a tube. Just, of course, be careful and be aware of what you're touching. Uh, so we can do it kind of quickly. So we'll plug in our power from our test bench here. And we will get our light bulb. Again, you want to touch the negative side of the bulb to the heat sink frame. And then touch your center and it should light up. If it lights up, your power supply section is good, you've ruled all that out, and you can tr uh, troubleshoot your horizontal section and other stuff, whatever you think it might be. Uh, of course, you can also, with the load, the proper load on the power, I'd recommend a 100 watt bulb. This, I think, is 23 watts. I would recommend a 100 watt bulb uh, because that puts more of a load on the circuit and more uh, close to what it would be if it was running. And you can actually adjust your B. Plus. Uh, off of this test if you want to, but I'd recommend doing it with actually a full load on it with the tube Everything hooked up and running. I would adjust your B plus under that uh, Situation, but if you want to with a hundred watt bulb You can actually use the light bulb test and hook it up to where it's permanently on with a socket or something And adjust your B plus at that time and I'll show you how to adjust B plus after this But let's just make sure that this actually works and our power supply section can be ruled out as a problem This all this already is a working chassis, so I know it's gonna work but just for Show and tell here, I'll show you here. So let's go ahead and turn this on. One, two, three. Okay. We have power to the chassis, so we will ground out our bulb and touch our center, and it should light up. Voila. Whoa. There we go. Lights up. So we have a good working power supply. So assuming that this chassis, let's say it was dead, we can now rule out everything over here. Basically, from this side over, we can rule out, and we can rule, and then we can start working on our horizontal section as the problem. So that's how you test it on a U2000. And now that we have power removed, uh, we can dissipate any storage energy by doing this again. There you go. See, it lit up a bit. So now we've, we've dissipated it a bit, and we don't have to worry about shocking ourselves. Uh, then we can take this and put that back in the circuit, solder it back in. And go about our troubleshooting. So that's how you do that. Now, as far as B plus goes, it's a bit different from the 7400, 7500. It's still the same test point, test point 202. But on the U2000, it's right here by R100. R100 is where you test your B plus. I'm sorry, yeah, your TP202 by R100. This is where you test your B plus. On the 7400, 7500, it was over here by this capacitor. So it's different location on these chassis. So again, you just hook your meter. Uh, you put your positive lead. Uh, you can put your positive lead on that test point. Put your positive lead here. And you can use your alligator clips if you want to. But you put your positive lead here and your negative lead on your frame or somewhere on your ground. And you set your meter to volts DC. And you want 117 volts. So that's where, of course, you... Uh, that's where you test it at to ground, and you adjust at your pot here. Assuming you're able to turn it, you'll probably have to replace it, like I mentioned before. They all are glued in place. Uh, this one's got hot glue on it. <laughs> so that's how you test your B-plus and your 
light bulb test on the Wells Gardner U2000. So up next will be the U5000, very similar, but it's a bit of a different configuration. So, so uh, let's get uh, on to the U5000, and hopefully this helped you out if you have a problem and you learned something. So stay tuned for the next video in the series will be for the U5000.